In the dark days of the First World War, New Zealanders looked to the turf exploits of Desert Gold to lift their spirits. She captured the hearts of race fans with a front-running style and fierce determination, and a record sequence of 19 wins in a row. Desert Gold was bred at Okawa Stud in Hawke's Bay, not far from Hastings. She was by All Black from Ararius. The breeder was Tom Lowry, one of three generations by that name to have a lasting impact on New Zealand racing and breeding from their Okawa base. Lowry, a noted sportsman, had been racing for years with many wins, mainly in jumping events. But it was after he teamed up with a private trainer at the start of the 20th century that more national success came their way. When Desert Gold started racing in 1914, she displayed good speed and mental toughness, but could only manage minor placings. She learned from the experience, and after five starts, the wins started to roll in. Her victory in the GG Stead Memorial Gold Cup was confirmation that a new champion had arrived. By her three-year-old season, Desert Gold was unbeatable. It started with wins at Hastings in the Hawke's Bay Guineas and the WRC Champion Plate. Desert Gold raced 14 times for 14 wins that season, a record that stood for more than 30 years until bettered by Mainbrace. The form continued through to the four-year-old season, with the first four starts producing more wins. An indication of the class of Desert Gold was the victory over Sassanoff in the Islington Plate at Ellerslie. Sassanoff was at his peak, having won the Melbourne Cup two months before, yet Desert Gold beat him comfortably. Then the unthinkable happened. Desert Gold's winning run ended at 19 in the North Island Challenge Stakes. She was beaten by a two-year-old carrying 38 pounds less on a heavy track. Desert Gold's jockey, Jack O'Shea, also accused the winning rider of grabbing his reins early in the race. The greatest winning sequence in New Zealand racing history was over, but not the career of the mayor that would be the measure of greatness in the following years. A third champion plate in Wellington was matched by a third Islington plate at Ellerslie. She was so popular that even tobacco companies wanted her for endorsements. A trip across the Tasman beckoned, and Desert Gold soon endeared herself to Australian race crowds with an impressive win in the St George Stakes at Caulfield. Lowry won even more admiration for the visitors when he announced the Australian Stakes earnings would go to the Patriotic Fund for the war effort. Randwick was then given the chance to see the champion mayor, and she raced away with the AJC Autumn Stakes and the All Aged Stakes before returning to New Zealand to win a third Awapuni Gold Cup. Desert Gold made another trip to Australia in the spring of 1918. She was given the rare honour for a mare of starting the Melbourne Cup with the top weight of nine stone six pounds. Two miles and some interference were too much for Desert Gold and she finished eighth. The war ended soon after, but back home, a new challenger was on the horizon for Desert Gold. Gloaming was embarking on a career that would eventually match her own record winning sequence. The champions met in three match races in Taranaki in 1919. Hector Gray kicked Desert Gold home in record time in the first race, while Gloaming claimed the other two races for a series win. Desert Gold's racing career ended as a seven-year-old. She had 59 starts for 36 wins, 13 seconds, five thirds, and stakes earnings of 23,000 pounds. Desert Gold returned to Okawa Stud, where she shared the paddocks with Bobrikov, another outstanding Lowry Galloper of the early 20th century. Her progeny produced winners over the years, including the 1934 Auckland Cup, but nothing to match the career of the great mayor that was revered by the war generation as the first lady of New Zealand turf. <laughs>